Welcome back to National Report. I'm Logan Raddick. Israeli jets flew very low over parts of Lebanon early Friday, terrifying residents on the night of Christmas Eve, some of whom reported seeing missiles in the skies over Beirut. And the Syrian Ministry of Defense issued a statement saying Israel, quote, launched an aggression by directing a barrage of rockets. And there was no immediate word from Israel on Friday's flights and alleged attacks on Syria. And joining us for some insight is Ambassador Ido Aharoni, former Israeli Consul General here in New York. And thank you for being with us this morning. And first of all, Ido, there was no comment from the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, which generally maintain a policy of ambiguity regarding uh, their activities against Iran and the proxies in Syria. So from what you know, what happened last night? That's correct. The Israel Defense Forces and in general, the Israeli defense establishment uh, is uh, never confirming. Sometimes they're not even denying. Um, but the um, I, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Since the implosion and the disintegration of Syria uh, as, at the outbreak of the civil war in 2011, Syria became um, basically the, the, the playground of the Iranians uh, even before the civil war, Iran used uh, Syria as a uh, pipeline through which Iran transferred weapons, um, um, funding, financing, and even uh, uh, personnel and training to Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. Now, Israel has an immediate problem with Hezbollah. To our viewers who don't know, uh, we had to go um, uh, to war in Lebanon in the summer of 2006 in order to curb Hezbollah's aggression uh, towards Israel. So the real story in Syria and Lebanon is actually Iran. And that's uh, that's really the context of all of those reports. And this is also coming at a time where Israel is dealing with political instability. And a lot of it is uh, similar to that in the U.S. There's a lot of a political division in Israel. You have Benjamin Netanyahu. He's fighting for his leadership elections, the fourth in under two years coming in March. And of course, Netanyahu, part of the conservative Likud party. So what are the similarities between the political climates in Israel and the U.S.? I think polarization. You have about um, Likud under Netanyahu enjoys usually about 25 percent of the vote. This is their classic base. Uh, I, I would say the Netanyahu Likud led bloc usually gets around half of the votes, and the other bloc, which uh, opposes Netanyahu, usually gets around half of the votes, including uh, the Arab votes. Netanyahu was unable to form a Likud led coalition without the support of the centrists in the last uh, three election campaigns. Uh, this fourth campaign is going to be unique because, for the first time, he's being challenged from his right wing and not from the center. And the challenger is a very well-seasoned Israeli politician by the name of Gideon Saar. And so uh, we expect that maybe the fact that Netanyahu is being challenged from the right uh, will function de facto as the tiebreaker. And, Ido, there's been a lot of talks about these peace deals that have been negotiated between the U.S. and Israel and these other Arab countries. And right now, Turkish President Erdogan says that his country would be better if they had ties with Israel. But he said in the past, whoever is on Israel's side, we're against them. So he's had a sudden change of heart. And with a bitter falling out between Turkey and Israel in recent years and er Erdogan criticizing Israel um, at a lot of turns and aligning with Iran and its proxies. Can they have a relationship with Erdogan in power now that he says that he might be willing to negotiate with them? So the big problem is uh, Bernard Lewis, the late uh, Middle East uh, uh, scholar, uh, said that the good news is that Iran wants to be like Turkey, and the bad news is that Turkey wants to be like Iran. So the, here's the story in short. Uh, Turkey um, may, you know, bet on Europe. They wanted to be part of the European Union. It didn't work out for them, sadly for them. Uh, and they made a decision under Erdogan to uh, shift their focus back to the Middle East. And Israel was the currency by which they paid for that return to the Middle East. Uh, before that strategic decision, Israel enjoyed a wonderful 
uh, relationship, diplomatic, business, and so on with Turkey. Uh, in fact, trade between the countries tripled in the last 15 years. And uh, tourism was robust and so on. Um, I agree with uh, uh, Erdogan that uh, Turkey's interest is to restore the good ties with Israel. I believe that he blames individually and particularly the leadership of Netanyahu. And uh, he, I think he used the phrase, Israel's top leaders are the problem. And, um, and, um, and I think that that's Turkey's best interest to restore relations with Israel. I think that he's seeing what happen what's happening in the uh, Gulf region. Countries are uh, seeking out diplomatic ties with Israel, business ties with Israel, trying to benefit from the fact that Israel is the most successful knowledge-based economy in the region. Now, Ido, we know that this uh, fourth election is coming up, and do you think that a possible Biden presidency could end up being a boost for Bibi Netanyahu, since there are really legitimate concerns that the U.S. will again try to appease Iran? I don't think so. Uh, the only issue that matters is corona and the way the government handled corona. We are on the verge of entering a third national lockdown. Israeli small business owners are devastated. The entire economy is devastated. So the elections is really not going to be about Iran. The elections are not going to be about the Palestinians. The election is going to be about Netanyahu's own style of leadership, very similar to what happened in the United States. It was about his style. And I don't think that the fact that uh, a Biden administration will uh, contemplate resumption of, of diplomatic ties with Iran is going to affect the, the results. The only thing on the table is the leadership of this government and the way they handled, or in the eyes of some people, mishandled the issue of COVID-19, which is a major, major blow to Israel's economy. And a lot going on in Israel here around the holidays. Ambassador Ido Aharoni, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.